So welcome, this is the recap that you've been waiting for. I took a 2,000 mile road trip from Dayton, Ohio to Orlando, Florida using the 2022 Tesla Model Y. And I wanted to put Electrify America head to head with Tesla supercharging network. So buckle up, let's get in and let's get into all of the fun details of this trip where I recap everything from time, stats, cost, and my final thoughts on whether Electrify America can compete with Tesla's supercharger network. Let's get into it. I did this trip to give you a little bit of insight into what it's like living with an electric vehicle. If you like this content, you found it entertaining, if you do me a favor, hit the like button for the almighty YouTube algorithm and consider subscribing. Thanks so much, let's get into the full trip. In case you missed it, I took a 2000 mile road trip using my 2022 Tesla Model Y Performance round trip from Dayton, Ohio to Orlando, Florida over the Thanksgiving holiday. On the trip down, I used Electrify America, uh, Electrify America's charging network, and I have the Tesla CCS adapter. On the return trip, I used the Tesla supercharger network, and I wanted to see head to head what was it like using Tesla versus Electrify America. The reason why I did this trip was really twofold. One, to educate and form and to entertain for you all on YouTube. But secondly, when I started to price rental cars over the Thanksgiving holiday, they were upwards of $1,500, which was crazy. So myself and my two kids hopped in the Tesla and we took the trip uh, down from Dayton to Orlando. My wife and my other child flew down and we met them at the Orlando airport. So let's get into it. Let's recap the whole trip so that way you can get insight into what Electrify America is like and what Tesla is like and what an overall EV road trip is like, what it's like living with one. All right, let's get into it. All right, let's go ahead and break the trip down. I'm gonna go through each of the charging stops, let you know our arrival state of charge, our departing state of charge, and how long we spent charging there, and what, if any, issues we had. All right, first stop, we stopped in uh, uh, Georgetown, Kentucky. We arrived at a 58% state of charge. We left with 71. We charged there for 13 minutes, so it just needed to get us enough because we were consuming a little bit more electricity on the trip. Second stop, we stopped in uh, uh, Williamsburg, Kentucky. This is where it got interesting. We pulled into the Electrify America station. There were uh, a number of empty cabinets there. Pulled up to the first 350 kilowatt station. It started charging. It capped out at about 22 kilowatts an hour. So after about two minutes waiting for it to ramp up, I unplugged, moved over to the second 350 kilowatt stall, plugged up. It wouldn't initialize. Tried multiple times on the app and at the station, still wouldn't work. So I finally unplugged, moved over to the third cabinet, 150 kilowatt stall plugged up and it finally uh, charged there. See, so we arrived with 22% and we left with 81% and we spent um, about 37 minutes charging there because of the slow charging at the beginning and then the fiasco of switching chargers. Our next stop was in a place called Collegedale, Tennessee. We arrived with 12% and we charged up to 69% and uh, had no issues there. The only issue we had was trying to find the 350 kilowatt station. One was out of service, and then the other one, there were about 14 stalls there, and I really had a hard time seeing it. It was in the middle of the night, and the lighting was not that great, at least uh, where the labels were at on the charger, and I think the lack of sleep and the low light contributed to that. So that was disappointing. Our next stop, we went all the way through Chattanooga, down through Atlanta, and we stopped in Stockbridge, uh, Stockbridge, uh, Georgia, which is just south. We arrived with 9%, which was perfect. And it was 3.30 in the morning, uh, and we charged for 45 minutes. We charged up to 9%, uh, 90%. The reason for that was I was just so exhausted from having worked and then having, having driven uh, the whole night through. I was just pretty exhausted. So I slept for about 30 minutes, got a power nap, and uh, in this case, the session was complimentary, so yay for Electrify America. Uh, next stop, we went down to Valdosta, Georgia, and we arrived with a 6% state of charge, yes, to try to take advantage of that faster charging, and we charged up to 68%. However, we did have a fiasco plugged up, 
started initializing it, started charging. I got about 1% and then the charger faulted. But of course it faulted while I was inside the Walmart uh, area. And so I had to go back out. Uh, I tried to reinitialize on the way back out on the app and I couldn't get it to work. So I had to go out, move over to a, another charging stall. I saw one that a, another Model 3 owner was using. So I plugged up uh, there after they had obviously left and I uh, got it to initialize. So we charged there for about 25 minutes, charged up to 68%. And then we went to our final stop, which was going to be in Gainesville, Georgia. And we arrived there with 20%. And this is where things got interesting. There were four stalls there and uh, three of them were occupied. So I pulled into the fourth and uh, multiple times could not get the app to initialize. Um, it said our session was going to be free, but uh, it just wasn't working. <clears throat> While I was there messing around with the app, uh, three other cars uh, pulled up around the same time. So at the time charging, there was an ID4, a Hyundai uh, Ionic 5, and a Mustang Mach-E. I talked to the Mustang Mach-E owner, and he said he had been there for 45 minutes. His charge rate was really slow. And on top of that, he said he had to get on the phone with Electrify America to get it to work. Um, and uh, the, other, the other thing I found interesting, uh, two of the three folks who were there at the charger there in Gainesville were getting their complimentary sessions. So some manufacturers give out free charging. So here folks could have charged at home. Instead, they drove down to the charger to save a couple of dollars. And in doing so, they clogged up the charger for those individuals who were driving. So tried multiple times, could not get Electrify America to work. At this point, we were getting close to having to pick up my wife at the Orlando airport. And so we had to charge. So I drove a quarter of a mile down the road to the Tesla supercharger and uh, charged up there. So uh, that is one where just Electrify America completely failed and uh, didn't work. So in case you're wondering, we arrived at the Tesla supercharger with 20%, charged up to 67%. That was enough to get us to the Orlando airport and then to the resort where we were staying uh, with the family. All right, so we spent a total of 197 minutes charging uh, using Electrify America and we did uh, six stops. And as you can tell, we had some pretty spotty uh, charger reliability. So at this point uh, in our vacation, we spent the week going to the theme parks, enjoying all of the fun festivities at uh, Disney, Animal Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, and we just, we really had a good time uh, with the family, enjoying Thanksgiving and enjoying the parks. Uh, during the trip there, uh, we had to charge up a couple of times. And right outside of the resort that we stayed at, we stayed at Reunion Resort. There is a Wawa, and right outside of the Wawa is a Tesla supercharger. So we were able to quickly charge uh, about two times uh, to get enough charge to run around and to do all the things that we needed to do. And the great thing was it was literally uh, a quarter of a mile outside the gates of the resort where we were staying. So a uh, very nice uh, station there. And if you needed to get something, Wawa's are always very clean and the folks are friendly. So great time in Orlando, great Thanksgiving holiday. It was time to head back home. All right, let's break this one down. The return trip, we left at uh, 1230 in the morning. We were charged up to 90%, and so we were ready to go. We had six stops, or five stops, that the Tesla was saying that we were going to stop at, uh, but we ended up making six, and I'll tell you about that in a second. First stop, Jasper, Tennessee. We charged for 34 minutes. We arrived with 12%, left with 85 uh, our second stop was in Fort Valley, i.e. at the Bucky. so very exciting. Uh, we charged for 24 minutes. We arrived with 16%, left with 76. Third stop, Adairsville, Georgia. Uh, we charged again for 23 minutes. We arrived with 13% and left with 74. And at this point, the vacation travel was getting kind of uh, full. And so as a result, Tesla added an additional stop because our next stop was in Knoxville, Tennessee. So we pulled into uh, Knoxville, Tennessee with 26% and we just charged for 13 minutes and uh, just enough to get us over the Cumberland Gap, which is a, a large elevation. And uh, we left with 61%. Uh, so we went to London, Kentucky, uh, which was our next stop. They've added eight brand new 250 kilowatt stalls. They're actually pull through stalls, which is really nice. So if you're pulling a trailer, uh, with either your Tesla or your soon to be Cybertruck, it'll be very easy to get through, uh, there and, uh, really nice, uh, to have those finally done. So we charged for 15 minutes. We arrived with 21 left with 63 
And then our final stop was going to be in Florence, Kentucky. And this one was just going to be a quick little pop up, uh, top up to uh, get there. So we actually charged for five minutes and we got 20% in that five minutes. So we arrived with 11%, uh, unplugged with 21%. And that was enough to get us home. And we arrived home with about 9% state of charge. So didn't want to spend any more on the expensive supercharging. So <clears throat> on the return trip, six stops, we stopped for 114 minutes and using the Tesla supercharger network, and we had zero issues. So it worked the entire time. And I'll put the stats up here on the screen for you to take a look at. All right, the moment you've been waiting for, I'm gonna go ahead and break down the whole trip. All right, first, 960 mile uh, trip, 958 return trip. I guess we took uh, two extra miles driving on the way down uh, somehow through gas stations and other areas, but uh, really equivalent uh, trip. This was over the Thanksgiving holiday. So if we had driven a gasoline car, I chose a Lexus RX 350. It's an equivalent size, uh, midsize SUV that gets pretty decent gas mileage. And you can see that it gets uh, about 27 miles per gallon, 27 miles per gallon. It requires premium fuel at 425 a gallon. So if we had driven the Lexus RX 350, those thousand miles, it would cost about $150 one way. So $300 round trip or about 16 cents a mile. Uh, in terms of the total trip time that a gas car would take, according to Google, 850 minutes. And then I added into that 850 minutes, 85 minutes of uh, stopping to stretch legs. So when we travel, we stop about every two hours and uh, stretch our legs, use the restroom, whether or not we need to fuel. So I built the fueling stops into those um, 10 minute stops along the way. So 850 minutes, one way to drive from Dayton, Ohio, down to Orlando, Florida and Orlando back to Dayton. So there you can see on the screen, the overall breakdown in cost, 150 bucks each way or $300 round trip. All right, let's go ahead and break down Electrify America versus Tesla and let's actually see how they did head to head. All right, both trips, six stops each way. Uh, we added uh, 260 kilo kilowatts using Electrify America and we added 229 minutes using the Tesla supercharger network. Here's where things get interesting. Average charge time with Electrify America, 27 minutes. Average charge time with Tesla, 19. So it was almost eight minutes quicker per stop and that adds up. So total charge time, 198 minutes, as I said before, versus 114. That's over one hour uh, dip more to charge on Electrify America. Uh, just another way to think about it, for every minute, uh, with Electrify America, we added 1.32 uh, kilowatts per minute versus Tesla at 2.01. So a lot faster using um, uh, the Tesla supercharger network. Charger reliability. This is a big issue that you've read a lot about. There was an article in the Wall Street Journal a couple years ago where UC Berkeley did a study looking at the reliability uh, back then of the fast charger network in the United States, and they plugged it at about 68% in terms of charger reliability. And uh, my experience was no different. Electrify America, it was a 60% charger reliability, meaning I would plug up and it would either work correctly or not work. And um, so 60% is just completely unacceptable. And if you are relying solely on Electrify America to travel, which that's really the only major network that has multiple stops along the way. That is, that's just, um, you can't do that. And as you saw in Gainesville, we just couldn't charge. Uh, the chargers were all full. So 60% Electrify America versus 100% with Tesla. So that just really big. And uh, the comparison is just uh, not even close. All right. So uh, lastly, let's break down. If we had driven a gas car, 150 bucks or 16 cents a mile uh, to drive uh, one way. Driving down using Electrify America, $37.50. Uh, I did have a complimentary session that was around $15. So call it 50 bucks. But in terms of the actual trip time, uh, trip cost $37 to drive down using Electrify America and um, or four cents a mile. So pretty good. Using Tesla on the return trip, it was right at $103 or 11 cents a mile. So again, still cheaper than the $150, 
But um, Electrify America, significantly cheaper in terms of cost uh, compared to the Tesla supercharger network. But with that cost uh, savings, you uh, give up uh, reliability or with Tesla, you're buying that reliability. And the great thing is if you're using the Tesla supercharger network, you can, or if you're using Electrify America using a Tesla, you can use uh, the Tesla network if for some reason EA doesn't work, but most folks don't have that uh, luxury. All right. And final, the trip breakdown in terms of time and minutes. So both trips were really, really didn't have any uh, additional um, headaches in terms of uh, travel times. And in one case we did, and I actually pulled that out and uh, just, just to kind of keep things apples to apples. So I kind of kept the times uh, comparison. So again, if we had driven a gas car, it would have taken 850 minutes one way. Using Electrify America, 1,140 minutes. So that's uh, quite a bit of uh, time. That's uh, start to finish incorporating all of the charging stops that took place. On the return trip, again, it would have taken 850 minutes using a gas car versus 1,022. So it took two hours more to use the Electrify America charging station versus Tesla. But again, it was still, um, it's still quite a bit more, um, it's still almost two hours more to use an electric car versus an equivalent gas car. So there you have it. Here's all the stats. I'll put those on the screen. You can take a look at that. So there you have it. Those are all the trip details. So I'm curious, what do you think? Gas car, electric car, Electrify America, Tesla, what's your experience? What would you do on a road trip? Would you use Tesla or Electrify America or would you just drive your gas car? So anyways, let me know in the comments below what you think. So here are my final thoughts. So will I do a Tesla or an electric vehicle road trip again? Absolutely. I really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. The cost savings uh, makes it fun, but more importantly, the technology in the Tesla car makes it so simple. The, the uh, uh, navigate on autopilot makes it really simple. The lane keep, the adaptive cruise, it really makes it simple. We drove the thousand miles and 99.9% .9 of the time the uh, autopilot was on and we had zero issues. It didn't disengage. It didn't lose lane lines. It really drove uh, really, really well. So compare that to our gas car. So we have a Toyota Sienna minivan. It's a great uh, car to drive. It's quiet, it's reliable, and it gets pretty good gas mileage. But the driving features are such that it, it just takes a lot more. And as those miles and time uh, elapse, it just takes a stress, um, it takes stress on the driver to pay attention and to make sure that you're navigating within the lines versus Tesla, which does a lot of that for you. So it takes a lot of the thought and the headache out of it. So I will absolutely, absolutely do a road trip again using uh, Tesla and using an EV. Will I use Electrify America? Absolutely not. There is zero chance on earth I'll use that for another road trip unless their reliability gets markedly better. And thus far, it just continues to not be the case as more of the manufacturers produce cars and they put pressure on Electrify America, those charging stations are getting fuller and their reliability right now is just very poor. It has to change. And in my opinion, Electrify America or Volkswagen Group, which owns Electrify America, has to do better if they're going to push the mass adoption of EV vehicles. So why would I use Electrify America? If you want a sense of adventure, go ahead and use Electrify America. If you don't want to know, uh, if you want to guess and not know whether or not the charger is going to work, go ahead and use it. Secondly, why you would use it? Cost. It is cheaper right now uh, than the Tesla supercharger network and on a factor of about 50% less. So that is something to think about. If time is not a consideration and you enjoy getting out and walking around to Walmart and enjoying the sights and sounds and shopping there, then great, have at it. But otherwise, for me, I'll use the Tesla supercharger network because to use the Electrify America network, you've got to use a better route planner uh, or some sort of other app which takes into account how much electricity you're using and it'll calculate all your stops. Otherwise, you're going to have to do all the math in your head or on a piece of paper and that just gets to be really difficult.
Tesla takes all of the guesswork out of it. You put in your destination, it tells you how many stops you have to make, what you're gonna arrive with with a state of charge, how long you need to charge there for, and what your next state of charge will be. If you unplug before or after, it recalculates all of that. It is really simple. There's no app, there's no phone. It's simply, you plug it in and it starts charging and it works. And in my experience, 100% of the time, the real-time status of all of the chargers across the Tesla supercharger network is shown right there on the screen of your car. And if for some reason, uh, the supercharger is really busy. What it will do is that it will actually reroute you and it'll say rerouting to a less busy supercharger because of supercharger congestion. So it may have you stop before or after charge for a shorter or a longer period of time in order to minimize the load that's being placed by the travel. So it really does a, a good job of distributing the charging and keeping things balanced in terms of uh, keeping charging times down and uh, the traffic up. So I think that's a big win for Tesla. And as you saw, the charge time at the charger is reduced significantly. Almost eight minutes less was my experience, Electrify America versus Tesla. And as you take longer trips, that time really adds up. So if it's just one stop or you're just around town and you need to charge up quickly, go ahead and, and have at it. But again, I don't know that it's worth buying the CCS adapter for 250 bucks. I'll put a link to that in the description below. I don't know that it's worth it to, to be able to use the Electrify America station. In my experience, I would just use the Tesla supercharger on my next road trip. So hey, thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks for hearing the recap. I'm curious your thoughts below. Put them in the comments below and I look forward to uh, getting back to you. So hey, thanks so much for tuning in. If you like this content, make sure you like and subscribe and I'll be able to produce more content based on the feedback that you all provide. It's your life, make it a good one, and I can't wait to see you on the road out there. Bye.